Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Moe K Swedish Whiskey Girl. And today we're here with an Octomore. And this is Octomore 6.1. Octomore is of course from the distillery Brickladi on Isla, and it's known as being the world's most heavily peated whiskey. Which is quite interesting, of course. I personally haven't found the Octomores I've tried so far to be so monstrous and like super super peaty and um, so I wouldn't say let it scare you from trying it because I think what Brookladi are so good at doing is to involve quite a big smokiness but also a lot of other lovely flavours so I really hope that's the case with this Octomore as well. This is a five-year-old, it's bottled at 40, no, it's bottled at 57% ABV and it's been matured in experiment casks. And of course they are doing annual Octomores and I know they can be quite tricky to get hold of and quite expensive unfortunately. But of course one of the reasons that they're usually bottling them quite young, some at five, some at three, but I also know they've done I think seven, eight and ten year olds as well. The younger it is, you can kind of retain more of the peat, more of the smokiness. And I would say that sometimes, I think it's peated to 167 ppm. And this is a measurement that I wouldn't trust blindly. I don't know my peat levels and my measuring of peat levels and ppm and peat that much. I would love to learn more. but. I think there's at least two different ways of measuring peat levels. I think ppm is usually the peat content, or the, not the peat content, but the phenol content. So you burn peat, which releases phenols that then attaches to the barley if they're at the right moisture, and then you can dry it and kind of continue with your production process. But the peat, the phenol content of the malt, can sometimes be very varied what actually ends up in the final product because of different cut points, different ways on your whiskey production road can make two whiskies from two different distilleries that use the same ppm of their malt end up completely different in smoke levels when they come out in the product because of how you produce it. Um, so I'm just gonna say that uh, and hope that this is something, I don't know where the PPMs measured for Octomore, just want to say that and I have no doubt that they've done a really peated expression, I just want to say that just be a little bit mindful when you see PPM that you sometimes might not know where they've measured it, how they measured it and what they did after that as well. But I'm super excited to try it because I mean anything from Brookladi I am going to be so curious about. So let's start by having a look on the notes. Oh, it makes me so happy. This is what I mean. When I notice this, the first thing I'm getting isn't smoke. It's something sweet and like velvety sweet and yummy. I just want to try it. There is like an edge of something burnt, but isn't this big powerful smoke. It's like... Yuzu meets pine, so like a sweet citrus, not quite orange, but more lemony, which is why I'm seeing yuzu, and then mixed with a little bit of pine because something fresh and quite, something quite nature esque. Yeah, yuzu and pine, I think that's quite a good description for what I'm getting. But citrus fruity is the, the dominant thing I'm getting straight away and then around it is that like slight little edge of pine around it and then there's a little bit of something almost burnt. We are going to add some water later on but for now let's have a sip. Slangera! Quite a thick mouthfeel. It's still that kind of warming yuzu-esque feel, like the sweet lemon. And what I like about it isn't, it's not a punch in the face. 
even though it's at 57 so it, it feels stronger definitely but it's not a punch in the face and this is what I like about Ritalady, what I really wanted this to be and what I've experienced from their previous editions. Of course, this is just my opinion and you know how I can be a bit peat line sometimes, so maybe that's it. But I just filmed another review for a peated whiskey and that actually, to me, felt smokier if you're just going by smoke. But what I think is with this, or what I'm hoping, is that Ritalady has taken the steps not to just make the peated expression that you can make so and they got in a really nice result from having a really heavily peated malt and then whatever they're doing at the end of like the rest of that journey leads up to this which is actually not just crazy smoky but actually tastes really nice because I mean I like a peated whiskey I mean Ardbeg 10 is what got me into liking whiskey but I like the balance between nice flavors, the mixing with smoke and not just like the smokiest thing you can ever get because that almost feels one dimensional sometimes. But yeah, that's just my little smoke rant. <laughs> Sorry, but let's have another sip because this I'm enjoying this. I would say it's quite sweet. So if you're a fan of like less sweet whiskies, then maybe this isn't for you. What do they do? I need to go to Ireland and find out what they're doing at Ritalady because they make a nice whiskey. That yuzu mixed with the pine, I think the pine is more of an influence on the palate. And then there is a smoke there that is like something slightly burnt and quite dark. Almost like burnt out coal more than like a bonfire smoke like more of that kind of coaly darkness I don't usually taste coal but if I could imagine it would be that kind of coal because it's slightly burnt slightly darker and still has a smoke to it use of pine and smoke that's how I would say some of this whiskey it's um and I mean the mouthfeel is lovely, it's quite, it has like a, what's it called, like a rough feel on the tongue, but it's quite thick, if that makes sense. Not oily, but just a little bit more robust and thick. A little bit of an orange zestiness because it has a slight bitter note as well. The smoke is definitely growing on the finish, but it's like it starts with the coal and then you get like almost like a little bonfire starting. I think it just tastes nicer the more I sip it. Hmm, and of course, let's not forget to add a little bit of water. Let's have another look. This is also one of those where you can see the, the oils really swirl around when you add some water. Almost a little bit more grapefruity now. And also like just white grapes. And a bit of what the the peel of a grape feels like it. it has a slight bitterness to it and it's yeah the grapes and a little bit of grapefruit and like almost like a fairy tale mossiness as well i know fairy tale isn't a great tasting note and i'm sorry but that's the way i describe it because it's like this like when i I think this is because I used to play in the woods a lot when I was little because we live in the countryside about like half an hour drive outside of the town where I grew up but I used to play a lot out in the woods and I used to always like imagine that there was little fairies and stuff living in the moss and I used to build them little houses so when I smelt like a certain type of moss it would feel like oh this is a fairy tale and I think that's what I'm associating it with and it's like moss that is dry enough to sit on but it's when it's slightly colder outside and it's 
it's a little bit dark and you almost feel like there's trolls around that tree so if you're not careful they'll come and grab you. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense but that's how my brain works. But yeah, let's have another sip. A little bit more smoke I would say now. But it's this, this grey smoke. Like burnt coal and then the grey smoke. Quite light and quite... Thin. So like if, if the smoke was right here and I did this, it would kind of just disappear really quickly because it's very light. Yeah, grey smoke. Yeah, coal. I think coal smoke is a good way to describe it because it's this kind of coaliness. Like even if you'd have, like if you burn something, you taste this like, like coaly sensation like on your toast or something. It's that kind of smoke. And quite sweet still. Hmm, it's that kind of white grape sweetness, I would say. That's quite juicy. And then there's that yuzu note and a little bit of pine. Oh, if only it wasn't so expensive. <laughs> um, yeah. What to do? I mean, this is the thing with price. I would probably spend that money on a bottle of this because I know I would probably enjoy it because the one Octomars I've tried so far have been lovely. But also, ugh, I don't need whiskey. <laughs> I really don't. But at the same time, it's it's yummy. <sighs> In the future, what, what if I manage to work really hard and I get a bonus or give myself a bonus, then maybe. Yeah. I definitely need to try more Octomores in the future. I mean, this is quite an old expression. Uh, I think they're on 10 points something now. Could be wrong. But I would, of course, love to hear your thoughts. What do you think of Octomore? Do you like the 6.1? Have you tried the 6.1? Or have you tried any of the other ones? I know they're using wine casks with some and yeah, doing a lot of really experimental fun stuff. So if you have a recommendation for me, please let me know. And I, yeah. I love the bottle design of it as well. I actually have this here, which is my little water bottle. <laughs> and yeah, if only there was whiskey in this, but I might have to get one in the future at some point. I just uh, haven't been able to afford it as of yet. And this one, I couldn't really tell you a price because I think it's sold out, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a really nice one. And I hope to be able to buy one in the future. And if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All the information is of course in the description here below, as well as links to my YouTube, my Patreon, my Teespring shop, and my Instagram, maybe, if you're curious about that. As always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I'm so grateful you want to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. And of course, if you've liked this video, it would mean so much to me if you would leave a little thumbs up and of course subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slangeva, skål!